Hello everyone, I'm Melanie from Dcube. We're building Dcube to be a unified platform for your data stack. It's basically data observability and discoverability all in one place. Through our data quality module, you will have the ability to configure a range of tests across your data sources, which will monitor your data assets that could be your tables, columns, or your transformation jobs. And you'll be able to trigger notifications directly to your inbox, so you don't miss a potential breakdown. We also have a catalog module, which is basically a great repository for all your data assets. When you connect your data tools, we load your Dcube workspace with all the assets, like your tables and columns to those tables and jobs automatically to the catalog, so you can have one place where you can manage all your data assets. I'll also show you how you can use this catalog to leverage on a feature we call the business glossary, so your business teams can take part in enabling data governance across your organization. We'll also take a look later at the Data Recon module, where you can perform a reconciliation to compare discrepancies between two separate data sets. Now I'm just going to show you what you'll need to do to get connected when you first sign up, and take you through how to configure your monitoring and set up your alerts. For your first time, we'll direct you to a landing page where you can connect your data sources. Here's all our available connections at the moment, and a few that we're working on real soon in our roadmap. Let's go ahead and see how you can add a connection to your Google BigQuery. There's going to be a few prerequisites that will need to be set up on your data source end. For more details on the permissions and how to set up for each data source, you can click on how to connect here. It will lead you to the documentation, which will show you that for the Google BigQuery connection, you will need to add a service account. And let's say if your data source is not publicly accessible, you may need to enable access to your VPC via IP whitelisting or using an SSH tunnel. And we've provided the steps for that as well. So once you've connected successfully to a data source, you'll be brought back to the dashboard. So our dashboard will be a little empty at first when you first connect onto Dcube, and that's fine because we take about three to five days to learn about your data and to raise the first incident. So what you need to do first is to configure your tables to enable monitoring. Table configuration can be done in a couple ways, but let me show you how to use our config feature to configure multiple tables at once. So you can head here and select your active data source. And once you've selected your data source from your metadata, it will actually populate all your tables. And there's a few settings here that we need to configure for each table. You can select the frequency here so we'll know how often to run the scans. Next, you will need to select a metric time, which is a timestamp or a date column. For certain data sources like Postgres or MySQL, we will need to know this column so that we can run efficient scans on your database. However, this is optional for data warehouses such as Snowflake or BigQuery if you just want to add table level tests. Selecting a metric time here ensures that there is no additional load on your database or warehouse as the queries will be optimized. So let's say you have 100 tables where you can configure metric time on. I know it's not easy to select each metric time from the drop down, so we've also added a box select option on the metric time where you can select the metric time columns that you would like to configure across multiple tables within the pop-up. You will be able to then sort the metric time column by priority. So for example, if the table has both updated at and created at as a metric time, if updated at has a higher priority than metric time, the table will have updated at selected as the metric column. A tip here is that you should select the metric time based on which you use for running all the incremental updates or inserts within your table. So it's either a created at for a frequently inserted table or an updated at for a frequently updated table. This informs our scanner to check the right column for the frequency that you have selected. So when after you have selected a metric time for a table, you'll be then able to enable the monitoring. Switching this on will allow us to monitor your table for two things, volume and freshness. We have a third table level monitor that's schema drift. I'll talk more about these test types later. Here you will be able to toggle on a notification Here's where we give you control to choose which critical tables you want to be notified about because it's possible that you want to monitor a table but not to be disturbed by hundreds of notifications. And then remember to save changes after you've done this so that we can start to run the instant scanner. So let's head over to the data quality page where you'll be able to see all the incidents that were raised in this workspace. Here are the five tests that we run on your table based on your configuration. I'll just give a quick breakdown on each test right here. The test for volume tracks the row count that was inserted into a table. Our model will define the threshold of the expected count of rows based on the previous scans. And if it detects an insert that was below or exceeds the threshold, an incident will be raised. Next is the freshness test. 
Our freshness monitors tracks the time since the table was last inserted or updated. Our model learns how frequently your table is updated and raises an alert if it has been too long. Then we have the schema drift test. This is enabled automatically for all tables when you connect a data source. It detects any schema changes, including table or column addition, deletion, or changing data types. These changes may cause compatibility issues with the database and applications that use these tables. Field test tests are basically tests you can set on your columns. We have 12 right out of the box, such as null checks, average, string length, or email checks. The last test we have here is job failure. So let's say if you add a connection with a transformation tool like dbt or fivetran, if there's a failure, it will trigger an alert called job failure. Monitoring for this is enabled by default for all transformations. So I'm going to head over here to one of the incidents, and when you click on it, an incident details panel will be shown. Here's a table that has a volume alert. Here we'll show you a simplified description, which includes the thresholds, and the detected row count that triggered the alert, and when did that failure happen, and the timeline of incidents that were raised. So here's something handy to manage the status of your incidents. So you can choose to actually mute your incidents. In the situation, if there's any sort of migration or updates happening with your database level, you may choose to mute it for a day or a month. Let's take a look at a field health incident. One of the most unique features we've worked on here is to provide a debug code for your engineers so that they can replicate it in their environment or their SQL editor. And this is great for engineers because they can exactly know where the problem is. They can possibly refactor the code so this particular action will be taken care of. And once it is fixed, they can then close the incident. The next thing I want to show you on this page is how you can add a new monitor here. Just select a database or data warehouse connection, search for the table that you want to add a monitor. I'm going to search for the product table and then select the preset monitor. So here you can update your table level test in case you want to add a notifications for this table. Or you can go to the field level test where you can actually select any one of these fields and add the test type. You can also go ahead and create your own custom SQL monitor. And this will allow you to write very specific queries that is specific to your business needs. And if you need more help on how to set up a custom SQL query, you can go over to the documentation link right here. So once you've set up your monitors, you should also set up your alerts right away so you'll get notifications when they are triggered. Head over to My Account and to the Configure Alerts tab. You'll be able to add email as a connection and also connect your Slack to your DQ workspace. So go ahead and authorize the connection to your Slack organization and then check out which Slack channels that you have created so you can receive the alerts on them. Let's head back to the catalog page because we spend a lot of time on the observability side of things. So let's talk about the discoverability. We've designed the catalog to be a great place for your business teams to navigate as well. One unique thing we've done here is also to build in the incident alerts and data quality into the catalog so that you can also see any assets that may have open incidents that needs to be investigated. We also support data jobs from your transformation tools and you'll be able to check out the metadata collected on your transformations. You can also assign ownership to them from your data team. Let's have a look within a table type asset to see more details. I'll take the product table as an example. So on the details page, we'll be able to see some information on the table overview, which was collected by a profiler. You'll be able to see some statistics on your table from here, as well as the field statistics tab, where you can have a quick glance on statistics such as min, max, distinct percentage, and now percentage of your tables to get a picture of your data before you use it for data analysis or modeling. The next tab I want to show you is the schema tab. It's where you can add tags to fields like marketing or user info and add classifications like PII, sensitive, so that your team knows these columns need to be handled with extra care as they contain classified information. You can also add a description for each column. Navigating to the incident tab, you also see the incidents for each individual table right here. We'll also be able to see the lineage for this table here. You can understand what is your upstream and your downstream data assets if there's any, which will be helpful as you also know if your downstream assets have been impacted by an incident. Here's also another way to add monitors, and you will have control over which table level monitors that you wish to get notification about. If you have added any field or custom monitors, this is where you can edit them as well. Another thing I'd like to show you in our catalog is a glossary module. This allows your organization to have a collection of data-related terms described in a clear language that everyone can understand. 
What I mean here is to say that if you have a business metric that's commonly thrown around in conversations like sales growth rate, what does sales growth rate mean exactly? Usually this kind of KPIs or metrics live on something like a spreadsheet, but now you can have them all here. You can set up glossaries and categories according to what makes sense for your organization. So that could mean business lines or geographic locations. And within each category, you can further set business terms, which are the business metrics you want to define. So an example right here is I've set it according to different departments in the company, and I'm going to look into the sales glossary. And within the revenue category, there is a sales growth term. So within this term, you can see that I've already assigned this to the respective owners, Leah and Danny, and their role is to make sure that this term is kept updated. I can also add a description to this term and add any additional documentation that really gives the context that the team will need to understand this metric. A cool thing here is that we enable the ability to link tables and columns from your data catalog to this metric directly. So imagine if you're a business analyst and you want to extract data for this metric, you can check out which tables contain the data that you're looking for. What we've done here is to make sure that if any incidents on these tables are open, we also show them here so that the user is aware about the issue on his table and take the additional precaution before using the data from here. Last but not least, let's head over to the data recon module. We think that several businesses have chosen a strategy of delivering changes and updates to the staging table and then pushing the data to the production table after the verification. Nevertheless, there is a potential that events were missed after you push to the production table, in which case you should really perform a diff or recon to look for any discrepancies. Some users may opt to compare discrepancies between two data sets for commercial or financial purposes, such as checking for inconsistencies between a payment gateway table and a transaction table. So go ahead and add a new recon and select a data source. You'll be able to select the tables right here. There of course needs to be a common key or primary key. And then go ahead and select a date time field for each table. Input the configuration here on how long you want us to look back into. And then go ahead and map some additional fields that you want to compare. And then go ahead and run the recon. So I'm going to show you right here a recon that's already been run. So we'll show you a summary of the matching rows and also show you in more detail which other rows that have the data diffs. One tip I'd like to share over here is that our recall module is actually amazingly fast. However, your keys need to be indexed properly. And that's about it. If you want to understand more about each feature, go ahead and view our documentation at docs.dcube.io and this will bring you to the features currently that are available on our platform and also to understand how to connect each data source. If you need any help from us, do reach out to us via our live support chat on the bottom right of your workspace. That's all for today. See you in the next one.